potentially affecting what your eventual mix is going to sound like. But for example, when you have like uh, three channels and uh, in the plugins everything is like uh, enough headroom, mm -hmm. but on the mass chain it's clipping, so then you just uh, suggest that you go into the mixing and put the levels more down. Then it's like on the mass chain that you have like enough headroom. He's, the question was if everything else has really good gain on all your individual tracks, and, but it's getting to the master channel and it's clipping, what would you do? Um, depending on the DAW that you're working in, it, it's, it's sometimes more or less com complicated. I work inside of Pro Tools, so one of the things that I, one of the two things that I might do is uh, create a group that encompasses all of my channels, and uh, that means everything that's going to the master fader directly, and then um, the subgroups. Um, so I wouldn't include anything that's going to a subgroup. I would only include things that are outputting to that master fader. Create a group out of it, and then you can either use the automation window in Pro Tools or Logic or anything else like that, and you can just trim all the volume so that it's not so much as going to the master fader. Another way to do it inside of Pro Tools is um, you can create that same group, but instead of trimming the automation, you create what's called a VCA, or master VCA, and that allows you to drop or raise the volume of all those tracks that are included in the, in the group at the time. Unfortunately, that's the, that's the only way to do it. You're going to have to just drop all those levels coming from the channels, and if you have automation on it, obviously you have to do it in the automation section because if you don't, you know, obviously drop it that way, then the automation will be affected. Um, but you try not to paint yourself into that corner. I mean, you're, during the entire production and mix process, you should be checking your game scheduling to make sure you don't get there, and leaving enough headroom available so that by the time you're into the mix phase and you have to do things like push the lead vocal another three or four dB, you've got room to do it. So don't paint yourself into the corner by just pushing too much gain to begin with. Sort of set yourself up for success in terms of keeping the headroom of your mix early on so that you're not trying to correct for that later. But the, really the way to correct for it is just to adjust all those faders at one time as a group. Yeah, I would suggest that be the best way to correct. I mean, there, I mean, there are different ways you can do plugins and trims and things like that. But again, it's all additional processing, all additional CPU. And, and again, eventually, if you are going to be putting those master effects on your master channel and that's how you want to work and you want to produce through that, I still suggest, I'm sure Ryan would agree, that get to at least a certain point where you have your gain scheduling kind of going before you start putting everything through a master effects processor and start doing a lot of those adjustments. Um, because it, it just gets a lot more difficult to deal with overall. Yeah, yeah that's true, but uh, yeah, sometimes you need to fix things that are like... Again, yeah, there's no right way all the time, they're just yeah. suggested best ways, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can definitely deal with those situations. I just think in, that, in, in most cases, if you can, you know, Manage it ahead of time. But you said like it affects like the stereo width and all the the gain. You, you know what I mean, like the quality. Yeah. But if you've like done done it on my way, that you have like uh, for example all the tracks and every track is like well uh, they have, an, have enough headroom in the plugins and then you set it like to one bus because you can put all the faders down of course. But yeah, you can also do it like with one fader, right? So that doesn't affect like the quality. But if you if you if you're if you're sending everything to a bus and you're hitting that bus too hard, uh, it doesn't really matter if you lower the output of the bus, you're still hitting the input of the bus too hard. So again, keeping track of your gain scheduling on both the input and output side is really important in maintaining that headroom. If you don't maintain that headroom, you really have much less of a chance of having a clear, open, punchy mix. So it's time to stop making excuses for making mistakes with the gain scheduling and just get on it and stay on it. It's just part of the production process. That's why we're talking about it right now because we think it's super important to getting a good mix. And if you don't stay on top of it, you're likely to have to make corrections. Really, the only way to correct it is the way I described, just create a group and bring everything down by the same amount so that it's not pushing too much level to any of the buses for the master fader. It's really the only answer. It's like a pre-fader, post-fader situation. Does everybody know what pre-fader and post-fader means? Yes? Yes, nodding heads? Some shaking, some nodding. <laughs>